This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, according to the book of Mark. We begin with John the Baptizer, the cousin of Jesus Christ, deep in the wilderness crying out, Prepare the way for the Lord, make his paths straight. Large crowds of people from all of Judea and Jerusalem came to John to receive a baptism of repentance for the remission of their sins. John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and for food he ate locusts and wild honey. Whilst he performed the baptisms, he would preach. There is one who comes after me, who is mightier than I, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to even stoop down and loosen, as I merely baptize you in water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It was in those days that Jesus came to John to be baptized in the river Jordan. As he emerged from the water, Jesus could see the heavens parting and the spirit descending upon him like a dove. A voice came forth from the heavens. You are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. After his baptism, the Spirit of God led Jesus into the wilderness, and there he was for 40 days, amongst the wild beasts, being tempted by Satan and ministered to by angels. Thereafter, John the Baptizer was thrown into prison, after which Jesus Christ came to Galilee and began to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, and believe in the gospel. It was by the Sea of Galilee where Jesus saw Simon and his brother Andrew, who were fishermen. And Jesus told them to follow him, for he will make them fishers of men. They left their fishing nets and began to follow Jesus. Not far off, he saw James the son of Zebedee and his brother John, who were also fishermen. They too left behind their father Zebedee and followed Jesus. Together, they went into the city of Capernaum on the Sabbath day, and Jesus began to teach in a synagogue. And everyone was astonished as he spoke with authority, unlike the scribes who could not. As he spoke, a man with an unclean spirit, a demon, began to cry out. <laughs> Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit. Be quiet and come out of him. Then the demon caused the man to convulse and cry out with a loud voice. <laughs> And the unclean spirit came out of him, and everyone was amazed. They were astonished that he had authority over the unclean spirits, and that the demons had to obey him. This casting out of demons made Jesus famous all throughout Galilee. After they left the synagogue, they went to Simon and Andrew's house, where Jesus healed their mother, who was very sick with a fever. After being healed, she got out of bed and served them. As the sun had set, many people who were sick and demonized by unclean spirits were brought to Jesus. The entire city was gathered at the door of Simon and Andrew's house, and many were healed, and many demons were cast out. But the demons were not allowed to speak because they knew who Jesus was. The next morning, Jesus woke up many hours before the sun would rise and went out to a place by himself and prayed to God. When Simon and the others finally came looking for Jesus, Jesus said, let us go to the next town. I must preach there as well, for this is the reason I came forth. And Jesus went about preaching in all the synagogues throughout all of Galilee, all the while casting out many demons. A man sick with leprosy, a very serious and contagious skin disease, came to Jesus begging for help. If you are willing, I know you can make me clean. Please, help me. Jesus was moved with compassion and stretched out his hand and touched him, saying, I am willing. Be cleansed. Immediately, the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. Jesus told him not to say anything about what he did, but that he should go before a priest, showing that he was now clean, and offered the appropriate sacrifice according to the law of Moses. But the man did not obey Jesus, and instead told everyone about what Jesus had done for him. Afterwards, Jesus' fame grew to such an extent that he could no longer enter the city, and so he traveled outside the city to very isolated places, and the people came to him from all around. After some 
some days, Jesus re-entered Capernaum. Again, a large crowd gathered at the house, and there was no room for everyone to be near him as he preached. A paralyzed man was brought to him by four men, but they could not enter through the door, for there were too many people. So instead, they went to the roof and uncovered the room where he was, and then they let the man down on a bed. Seeing what faith they had in Jesus, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now there were scribes nearby who considered Jesus' statements blasphemy, as they thought that only God had the authority to forgive sins. But by his spirit, Jesus knew what they were thinking, and then said to them, Why do you reason about these things in your hearts? Which is easier, to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, Arise, take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power on the earth to forgive sins. He then told the paralyzed man, Arise, take up your bed, and go home. Immediately, the man arose, picked up his bed, and went out of the house. Everyone was amazed and glorified God, as they had never seen anything like this. Soon after, Levi the tax collector, son of Alphaeus, joined Jesus' group. Jesus and his disciples ate at Levi's house, along with many other tax collectors and sinners. When he was seen doing this by the scribes and the Pharisees, they judged him for eating with tax collectors and sinners. Jesus then explained that he did not come to call the righteous, but the sinners to repentance. Again, at another time, Jesus was approached and asked why he doesn't instruct his disciples to fast, like the disciples of John the Baptizer and the Pharisees. Jesus then explained that whilst he was with them, there was no need for them to fast, but a day would come when he would be taken away from them, and in those days they would fast. Again, at another time, Jesus and his disciples were walking through a grain field, and his disciples plucked heads of grain so that they may eat. When the Pharisees saw this, they accused his disciples of breaking the Sabbath law, which is the fourth commandment. But then Jesus reminded them that King David himself ate the sacred bread of the temple when he was hungry. And according to the law of Moses, this bread was only to be eaten by the priests of the temple, which David was not. It was then Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. He then went into the synagogue, and there was a man with a withered hand. The Pharisees paid close attention to see if he would again heal on the Sabbath. Jesus then approached the man and then asked the Pharisees, Is it lawful on the Sabbath to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they didn't respond, and Jesus was angered by their cold and hard hearts. He said to the man, Stretch out your hand, and his hand was completely healed. The Pharisees immediately left and began to plot with the Herodians how they might destroy Jesus. Jesus then left with his disciples and stayed by the sea. And a massive crowd followed Jesus from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and from even beyond the Jordan, as well as those from Tyre and Sidon. Jesus healed many people, and whenever the demons within the people saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, saying, You are the Son of God. Shh. But he always commanded them to be quiet so that they would not reveal who he truly was. After this, Jesus brought his followers up to a mountain where he selected 12 disciples who would go with him everywhere, and whom he could send in his name to preach the gospel and have the power to heal sicknesses and cast out demons. The 12 were Simon, who was given the name Peter, James, the son of Zebedee, John, Andrew, Philip, Matthew, Thomas, James the son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Canaanite, Bartholomew, and Judas Iscariot, who would ultimately betray Jesus. Jesus then returned home, but before he or his disciples could even eat, the crowds gathered yet again. Then Jesus' own family went out to restrain him, as they were saying that he had lost his mind. The scribes who had traveled from Jerusalem accused Jesus of being possessed by Satan, who they called Beelzebul, and that it was by the power of Satan that he was casting out demons. Knowing this, Jesus summoned everyone and began to teach. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, then that house cannot stand. So if Satan is risen against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. No one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I tell you, all sins of men will be forgiven, 
whatever blasphemies they utter. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. He said this because they accused him of having a demon. Then he was told that his mother and brothers were outside calling for him. But then Jesus said that it is whoever does the will of God that are his brother and sister and mother. Thank you sincerely for taking your time to watch this entire video. Crafting it has been a labor of love and I am truly grateful for your attention. If you found this content meaningful, I would be immensely grateful if you could share it with a friend or family member who might benefit from it. Maybe this video could serve as someone's initial encounter with the story of Jesus or offer a reassuring reminder of the message of our Lord and Savior. This video is merely an introduction. The Gospel of Mark has 16 chapters and this video covered the first three. I encourage you to read the remaining chapters for a deeper understanding of the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. It should take you less than an hour and a half and if you wish, you can begin at chapter 4, as I gave it my best effort not to omit anything significant. Once again, thank you, and may God's blessings fall upon you as you continue in the faith.